I've already released a video showing how awesome version 10 of Tesla's autopilot software is on the highway. Well, with artificial intelligence, it often feels like for every two steps you take forward in one area, you're gonna take a step back somewhere else. Navigate on autopilot is version 10's two steps forward. Auto steer on windy roads is its very big step backward. I drive this particular road multiple times on autopilot every day. It has a 45 mile per hour speed limit, but as you'll see right here, version 10 slows for this turn whereas version 9 does not on face value it might seem like a good thing that version 10 is slowing for this turn but not only is it unnecessary as far as safety goes the way version 10 slows is really bad it's not smooth at all waiting until the car is already in the turn to start slowing then scrubbing a few miles per hour off the speed with a quick tap of the brakes followed by a little acceleration followed by more severe braking followed by more acceleration this next turn is horrible in a different way version 10 slows hard for from 45 down to 40 miles per hour before starting the turn, takes the turn fairly smoothly, then haltingly works its way back up to 45 miles per hour as the road straightens out. As I was watching this footage, I was trying to figure out how to measure the G-Forces real time on video so you can see how bad this feels, but I realized a really good proxy is built into the car. This little warm bar indicates braking and acceleration. Green is braking and black is acceleration. It's not exactly G-Forces, but the correlation is certainly high. Watch for the rest of the corners how the warm bar jumps around between braking and acceleration on version 10. Compare that to how the warm bar looks in the same turns on version 9. Of course, I just get done saying that we come up on the one turn where version 10 clearly outshines version 9. There's a gap in the center line right at the start of this turn. Version 9 wants to go straight but I don't let it so it kicks me out of auto steer. Version 10 clearly anticipated the curve, slowed way more than it needed to but it stayed in the lane. I immediately reactivated auto steer on version 9 so you can see that from there it takes the rest of this S turn faster and more smoothly than version 10. It then takes version 10 quite a bit of time to come back up to speed compared Compared to version 9. While we're at a point in the road without much action, I want to mention that I realize the zoomed in worm bars are jumping all around, but that was beyond my editing skills to stabilize without causing other issues. I also chose not to resync the version 9 footage with version 10 so you could see the cumulative effect of the differences in how autopilot drives this road. On that note, my left hand never leaves the wheel, and I'm always watching to keep autopilot from doing anything that would put me or others at risk. I drive holding at about 10:30 on the wheel, which lets me relax my arm while putting enough torque on the wheel for autopilot to know I'm there, but not so much that it kicks me out of auto steer. Even though this is a video demonstrating an area where version 10 performs worse than version 9, it's still doing better than the earliest builds of version 9 on this road. When we first got our Model 3 a year ago, auto steer did fine on the straight parts of this road, but it crossed the center line way too much to be safe to use on any of the turns. It got better and better over a year's worth of updates until it got to where it could safely drive nearly the whole road from end to end without me needing to intervene at all. And that sets my expectation for version 10 from here. I know that future updates will smooth out the braking and acceleration through curves that we're seeing now. Speaking of curves, version 9 is now coming up on a curve where cars like to park on the side of the road parallel to traffic. Autopilot brakes hard every time it sees a parked car on this curve because it thinks the car is stopped in the road. Braking is hard, then followed by a bit more acceleration than most are comfortable with, but it never kicks into full-on emergency braking and resumes driving as soon as it realizes the parked car is off the road. As luck would have it, there were no cars parked in the middle of the curve for this demo of version 10, but it still behaves the same way when there are. I'm going to drop the worm bars for now so you can see some of the changes to the on-screen animations in version 10. First thing to note is that when the crappy center lines look like double lines, they appear as double lines on the screen in version 10. This lets you know that autopilot knows not only the bounds of your lane, but also that the adjacent lane will have oncoming traffic. It also now has animations for oncoming cars, though as you will see, the animation lags behind the real world by quite a bit. This lag is only for oncoming cars though. You won't see it in this demo, but the animations for vehicles traveling in your same direction on multi-lane roads are still synced pretty well with where they are in real space. Here comes a nice string of cars in the version 10 demo for you to see what I mean. Not only are the cars passing well before the animation passes, but entire cars are missing in the animation altogether. I'm sure that'll get better as with other ways Tesla animates cars on the screen, but right now, the oncoming car animations are pretty meaningless. 
Version 9 is already approaching the end of this road with version 10 maybe a quarter mile behind. This isn't a big deal in a practical sense, but it gives you an idea for how much slower version 10 drives a windy road than version 9. What follows is a comparison between the two versions on the same road going in the opposite direction. There are a few minor changes that might interest some of you, and I wanted to share the footage as a baseline for future comparisons. However, I will run the rest of the footage free from narration so you can make your own judgments based upon what you see. In case this is where you stop watching, I do appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.
Thank you.